The biggest impact to your offshore safety is understanding weather and forecasts for storms, winds, and seas. The Ocean Prediction Center, founded in 1955, strives to provide the world's best marine weather forecasts. Ralph Naranjo, a round-the-world sailor and author of The Art of Seamanship, lays out the many weather aids available to sailors racing or cruising offshore. The Ocean Prediction Center is a sailor's best friend. What they do is develop weather forecasts uh, and analysis for offshore conditions and um, provide mariners with the information they need. So give me a little overview of some of your sources. The Ocean Prediction Center fits under the NOAA umbrella. They're literally uh, controlled by the National Weather Service that runs both the Ocean Prediction Center and National Hurricane Center, and recently has uh, brought in under their uh, aegis uh, the Storm Prediction Center. In real life, pragmatically, what are some of the resources that you use? I like to type in the Ocean Prediction Center on a browser line and up comes a couple of maps uh, and a whole menu system about what's available from the Ocean Prediction Center. I compare it with what I'm reading on the barometer, what I'm seeing in the sky, and what sea state exists around me. The analysis tells me what's happening now and uh, the forecasts uh, go out uh, several days and tell me what's going to happen in the future. The barometer still works? Absolutely. The barometer is a wonderful tool. It's not specifically the, what the reading is at the moment. It's what the trend has been over the past hour or two or even 24-hour period. The bigger the change in the barometer, whether it's up or downward, the more significant the weather event will be. So, Ralph, uh, what are we looking at here with the surface analysis map? Surface analysis is a measurement. Weather stations across the country ship reports from uh, VOS, uh, Merchant Marine Reporting, uh, give the uh, Ocean Prediction Center the means by which they can build the weather maps. So the analysis tells us what's happening at a given period of time and is, uh, quote, the most accurate of weather maps. So looking at the legend of this map, there's all kinds of different lines and formats. How, how do you actually read it? Initially, a weather map looks like abstract art, but by using an effective legend provided by the Ocean Prediction Center, you'll determine the difference between warm front, cold front, occluded fronts, and other um, information such as trough lines and ridges all indicate changes in weather, changes in air masses that are meeting each other, and how pressure gradients influence what's happening on the sea surface. So there aren't too many different looks or, or graphics to use, so it should be relatively easy to learn. It is, and there's no uh, differential equations to unravel. So it is a straightforward and very uh, beneficial means by which to determine weather. So something that's important to every sailor is the wind analysis. Wind is an important factor because it drives the sea state. Satellite photography has really helped weather forecasting. Here we have a GO satellite picture of cloud cover with wave size superimposed. It's in feet and it indicates the significant wave height, the average of the top one third waves that you'll see. Occasionally, especially in the Gulf Stream, you'll find waves that are twice, perhaps even larger, the significant wave height. Pretty impressive. It is, and it uh, gets a sailor's attention uh, when one of these events sets up on the north wall of the Gulf Street. So it seems pretty important to monitor the weather 24 hours, 48 hours, even three or four days ahead so you know what's coming. The forecasts do extend out over a longer time period. And at the Ocean Prediction Center website, you'll find a 24-hour, 48 and 96. The 24 hour is a different scale. In other words, it's a expanded view of a, a smaller area. Uh, the 48 and 96 are a larger scale um, image and they also show the progression of the lows, the uh, intensity changes, and uh, the cold front and warm front uh, movement toward the east. Why should we pay attention to the 24-hour, the 48-hour, and the longer-term 96-hour time period? It's all about uh, intensification. 
Very often a low moves off Cape Hatteras or New England and intensifies extremely quickly, especially in the early spring, um, mid-fall to late fall, and absolutely during the winter time. So development of these systems uh, become a crucial thing in planning and decision making. So here we have a typical uh, surface forecast. What can we learn from this? Probably not to go sailing during the winter time. You're looking at a deep baroclinic low moving uh, up uh, in a northeasterly direction. It's being influenced by both surface uh, conditions, meaning uh, the weather air masses that are moving into the area. It's also being influenced by the upper atmosphere at the mid-level. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment, but these surface forecasts are probably the most important uh, that the uh, Ocean Prediction Center provides. How often do they come out? Come out twice a day, and they are indicative of changes that are occurring. Uh, for example, if you look at the red arrows, that shows the movement of the given low pressure system. Uh, and one of the lows on uh, this particular map is moving almost northward, which is more unusual. They normally move in a north northeasterly direction. So, what's the time period? Is there one right at this moment, and then 12 hours later? Yes, it's a 12 and 12, and um, what you'll have is there's, um, they're scheduled in a staggered way, so not all of the uh, forecasts are um, updated at the same time. In contrast to that last map, where I would not have wanted to be, summertime, it's a little bit better. Absolutely. Um, the thing you're doing in the summertime is praying for a breeze because there's very little there. You can notice the slack pressure gradient, meaning the isobars are spread quite a bit, um, and it means winds are going to be light. You'll see small uh, cumulus puffs of cloud like cotton moving through um, the atmosphere, and the barometer is going to stay in the mid-range. Uh, no extreme shifts or movement. That's all the uh, manifestation of summer until you get a tropical storm or hurricane. So you're out at sea or you're doing coastal cruising. How often are you checking the weather? Depends on the conditions, where you're sailing and when you're sailing. If it's a volatile um, scenario, I like to be updated on every uh, forecast. I'll look, um, usually morning nav uh, plot, I'll look at weather and then evening especially. You want to know what's going to happen during that uh, 10 or 12 hour period of darkness. So a couple times a day you're checking the weather? Absolutely. So what are we going on here today? What we're looking at is the middle part of the atmosphere. This is the 500 millibar level. It's about 18,000 um, uh, feet above the surface. The irony with this chart, we're not looking at isobars. They're called isoheights. Every point on that map is 500 millibars in pressure. But what we see is an immense amount of wind velocity. We're literally at the bottom of the jet stream, and that uh, streamlining of breeze shows us how the systems are going to move on the surface. It's a telltale and it also is an example here, the yellow portion on the um, map is an example of a trough that's developing in the middle of the at middle atmosphere that will violently affect the surface. So the low is moved northerly here. What, what's going on in this image? We've also come down to the surface. We've looked at the surface effect of that upper level low. Not alone is it north and east of the upper level low, but what it's done is it's intensified uh, this particular um, surface low pressure system. If you look at the wind barbs, you'll see that we have a uh, radius of gale that's probably six or seven hundred miles here with closer to the center of the low it's storm force conditions. Storm force means about 47 knots to 64 knot sustained wind velocity. Sustained winds are winds that are measured over a 10 minute period. So we don't want to go to sea in this condition. Absolutely another uh, reason the North Atlantic has such a vile reputation. So we have two maps that you've overlaid here with uh, wind strength. Tell me a little bit what we're looking at. What we're looking at are the 48 hour and 96 hour 500 millibar maps. They reveal where 
uh, the mid-level winds are traveling. We see a trough that's starting to diminish and become more of what's known as a zonal flow. Zonal flow are strong winds moving from the west to the east. Again, this is the bottom of the jet stream and uh, it's a real advantage to pilots. It can be a real nightmare for sailors. So the 24-hour wind and wave forecast seems to be really important locally when you're out there. It's really important, but it's also pretty straightforward. So it's not like the 500 millibar that takes a bit of a learning curve uh, to put to good use. The wind wave shows you sea state. In the 24 hours, the sea state is in feet. In the 48 and 96 hours, it's in meters. If all of a sudden you look and see a 12 on a 48 hour uh, chart and say, oh, it's 12 feet, no big deal. You have 12 meter seas that are the significant wave height. Very big difference. It also overlays the Gulf Stream on this chart. So you see a uh, center axis of the Gulf Stream shown as well as the local uh, sea state um, and wind velocities and direction. Very handy piece of information. We're still talking about waves here. Describe why we have different colors. What does this chart mean? Waves are the thing that really impact us. Wind is important, but the sea state is very, very important. This particular chart shows us the period of waves, their uh, direction of movement. As you can see, during winter months, the seas really pile up on uh, the European shoreline. This is why the French trying to enter the uh, harbor in La Rochelle or uh, Portuguese sailors off that coastline have so much trouble during winter months. Tell me a little bit about the Gulf Stream and how you read that these days. The Ocean Prediction Center has greatly improved uh, its Gulf Stream information. Uh, Tom Cuff, the head of Ocean Prediction Center, a retired Navy captain, brought his expertise about stream and stream access to the Ocean Prediction Center. What we get is a combination of satellite uh, infrared data, model data, and actual buoy information giving us uh, an increased amount of data and consequently better resolution. Really helpful when you're racing. <laughs> Absolutely. So as look at this image here, the Gulf Stream, what do the red patches show us? What we're looking at is speed, the current's velocity. What we're also looking at is the warmth of water um, versus the cold water, uh, the green and blue. So in essence, what we're having is an opportunity to increase safety and what I'd term uh, advance a tactical advantage. You notice the cold core rings uh, that rotate counterclockwise. The one uh, outside the stream wall um, east of Cape Hatteras is a fairly significant uh, cold core uh, ring. There's a dissipating ring off the Delmarva coast um, of um, the Chesapeake, and it's um, going to be uh, recaptured into the stream as it moves on across the Atlantic. Gulf Stream is important to a racing sailor and critical to a cruising sailor who wants to spend uh, the least amount of time uh, in heavy weather in the stream as possible. It's amazing all this is happening. You're, you're out there in the water, it's just waves and you're going and waves are big, they're small, but boy, there's a lot of activity going on around you. Absolutely, and one of the things I've learned over the years, whether it's in the Gulf Stream or in the Agulhas Current off Africa, the stream intensifies bad weather. It's wonderful to ride the stream when it's going in your direction and things are, um, let's say, medium to benign, uh, but when things get riled up in the form of a gale on the Gulf Stream, it's a place uh, to avoid. So both your racing and cruising sailor really uh, relied on the grib files that come to you. Describe this map and what the grib is. Gridded uh, binary files are what oceanographers and meteorologists have used for a long time. Now they're available to sailors themselves. They're machine-driven uh, modeled data. What you're looking at in the top line there is a uh, probabilistic uh, forecast. In essence, it shows colorized patches of 15, 25, and uh, over 34 knot uh, regions. And the coloration 
indicates percentage. Red is 90%, yellow is 70, green is about 50%. So in essence, what you're looking at is how much of the ocean are you likely to see a certain velocity of wind. These are helpful, but they're not a uh, replacement for traditional weather charts, where you also get a snapshot of what's coming down the road, as well as the intensity, direction it's moving, and you have a feeling for the weather masses that are causing those changes. So you're out at sea. How do you receive this information? Reception of weather forecasts is the tricky thing. Uh, companies like Predict Wind or um, uh, Sirius XM um, uh, Radio provide great data. The question is, how do you receive it? There's a point where you are relying on satellite or single sideband technology. The latter is still in play, but it's more difficult to use. Um, Iridium sat phones and similar devices can receive data, but it's very low baud rate. Consequently, the Ocean Prediction Center and National Weather Service give us what's known as an FTP capability to receive weather maps that are only 35 kilobytes in size. This small packet of data can be received through email. It's a really handy option, especially when you find yourself beyond the range of either um, Sirius XM or your uh, cellular connection with Predict Wind um, is no longer in play. Can you get this off satellite phone, sat phone? You can, and the Iridium or Global Star or Inmar sat, sat phones will all do it very uh, uh, effectively. It's an email capability. So even through a sail mail type product, uh, you can get this uh, type of uh, information.